Hey everyone, and welcome back to ZQ1 Plays. I'm so glad that you guys could join us today. Um, I am starting off today by talking about one of my favorite Pokemon in all of Pokemon. It probably is my favorite. It appears in my logo here on the channel, and that is Girafferig. Girafferig um, has long been my favorite Pokemon with that normal and psychic typing. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of its base stats here. Today, we're going to do a little breakdown on how to use this Pokemon well in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And then tomorrow, we have a, a VGC team going live for the first time that's going to feature this Pokemon well. It's evolved for it. So obviously when it was announced for Scarlet and Violet, the Giraffe Rig would be evolving. I got beside myself because Giraffe Rig's a decent attacker, but it really is nothing special. It's very... Uh, flimsy. Gets blown up by pretty much anything. But boy, did they change that with Scarlet and Violet. So um, if you're wondering about this website, too, it's a really cool website. It's an alternative to Cerebi. It has a lot of good information. And this website is called Bulbapedia. Bulbapedia. You can find it pretty easily on the internet. So Now, let's talk about Furgaraf. This is the Pokemon we're actually talking about today. I just wanted to highlight Giraffe Rig as one of my favorites. Such a great design Pokemon. And, of course, has that normal typing, which I love so much. Ferrigarath keeps the normal typing, which I was a little worried for a while that it was going to be pure psychic, but it does keep the normal typing, uh, securing it as also one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. And uh, what they changed, they did so well. Sap Sipper, they kept his best ability in Sap Sipper, but both of Giraffe Rig's early abilities change now, and you get Kudchu, which works um, very well for using berries, and you also get Armor Tail, which is probably the best ability in the game. Obviously a joke there, but it is very, very spicy. And I love using it. So here's its base stats. Furgraph has an, a 20, 120 HP stat. That is incredible, considering that it's almost double what Giraffe Rig's HP stat is. Its defense and special defense are uh, nothing too fancy. Um, but with that 120 HP, it can take a couple of hits, which is incredible. Special attack at 110 makes it a very hard-hitting threat if you want to run it that way, especially in singles. And then its speed is middling, but that's okay because it is a psychic type, meaning that it can set up Trick Room and use it pretty effectively. So, uh, not you know, needless to say, this is still one of my favorite Pokemon. And I had a chance to shiny hunt it, but I'm not going to be revealing that to you guys until tomorrow's episode when you see the VGC team live. Now jumping into how to use Furigaraf, the reason you probably clicked on this video in the first place, in competitive Pokemon. So Furigaraf is, like I said, a, uh, kind of a bulky attacker. Could be a wall breaker if you use choice specs or maybe a nasty plot setup, but it's a very bulky special attacker and it is very fun to use. Um, I will show you very quickly how I use it in VGC, but I'll be going more into that tomorrow, so let's save most of that. I use the Armor Tail ability. Armor Tail, the Pokemon and its allies are protected from opposing priority moves. This is obviously really good in VGC because it not only protects you, but also your opponent, so you guys cannot get faked out. You cannot get sucker punched. Um, there's a lot of other things that it covers, but especially any prankster status moves. So if you have a, say, prankster taunt, that's not going to work. If you have a prankster, um, what's the other one that I got into? Quash. Yeah, the one that makes your uh, your move delay to the end of the turn. That will not work on you as well. So Armor Tail is very good, especially, and it works on uh, switch ins. So you don't have to worry about um, about anything else. You can switch in Armor Tail to protect your other Pokemon from being faked out and say, go for a trick room. That might come in handy tomorrow. We'll show you guys. So as far as moves in doubles, uh, Hyper Voice, obviously, uh, because it hits both opponents, and it hits everything except for ghosts, and so that's always good. Uh, psychic move, usually uh, you're going to run Psy Shock or Psychic. Psy Shock is really good against Amoongus. Um, however, I've been actually running Psychic Fangs, and I'll tell you why a little bit more tomorrow. I like running Trick Room because I use it on a Trick Room team, but otherwise, uh, you do not have to run Trick Room. And then, as far as your fourth slot, you have a lot of options. And this is where you could get into any number of different things. If you want a, uh, a tricky set, you can go Ally Switch, catch them off guard, and make them double target a, a Farigaraf instead of the Pokemon that they're trying to knock down, and you might get a knockout in return. Right? If you wanted to be a little bit more threatening, which I've very much considered, you could go with a Calm Mind set. Uh, this allows you to boost up a little bit. Obviously, you can go Protect if you're uh, taking a lot of damage with Frigraph and you're wanting to protect him a little bit more. Uh, Nasty Plot if you're more of an attacking set. Um, light Screen. I mean, there's so many. Foul Play even, I could see, being viable in some cases. I mean, there are so many 
really good options for Furgraph to use. I've seen Dazzling Gleam on it before. Uh, I don't think I've seen Thunder Wave too much, although it could work. Um, yeah, I mean, it, there's so many different things you could use. But in terms of my set, I choose to go with, a lot of the time, Helping Hand in doubles. Because Helping Hand usually is going to help out getting a KO that Ferrigraph might miss on its own. Keep the normal Terra typing, that way that you can uh, power up that Hyper Voice if you find yourself falling behind. And then you have a couple of different options for item. I've tried Colber Berry to protect yourself from one-hit KOs, from Dark type attacks, which is one of your, your biggest ones. Um, and then also, in a similar way, a Tenga Berry could work against bug type attacks. And uh, let's see, I've done a Berry before, such as like the Wiki Berry. And then my the one I've been recent, uh, recently using that I really like is Throat Spray. Because after you use Hyper Voice, it will power up your special attack, making you hit harder on subsequent turns, which if you're under Trick Room, you're going to be able to do um, more, more likely. A really simple set would be max out both stats and run a Quiet Nature so that you're slower under Trick Room. This boosts your special attack and loses a little bit of speed. Now, I'm not going to go into my specific EV spread because I'm not revealing that quite yet. You'll see it tomorrow. Now, how are you going to use for a graph in singles? You could choose to run a set um, sort of like you do in um, VGC with the armor tail and protect against priority, and you come in on a mon that is primarily using priority, and you, uh, you either kill it with a choice scarf or um, you set up in its face, right? There's a couple different ways to do it. You can also use Sap Sipper in singles because it's a great switch in for a lot of the uh, grass types that are running around in different tiers right now. I choose to use Kudshu for a little bit of more spice, and you can do it with a Citrus Berry so that you can gain more health, which is probably what I'll be doing today because that seems to be what I'm most in need of. You could do it for a Salic Berry so that you have uh, more opportunities to outspeed things. And, of course, you could also do it with a berry that uh, boosts your special attack when you're in a pinch. But for today, we'll go with Citrus Berry. Kudshu allows you to use the berry again at the end of the next turn. So it helps us if we run Protect. Although you do not have to, okay? Which I may be taking off for our battles today. So let's see here. Citrus Berry pops and you get the little bit of health back. Next turn you Protect and you make sure that you get that health back again. In terms of moves that I like to use, Nasty Plot in singles. Really good setup move. A lot of times people are going to switch out if you make a good switch. And so Nasty Plot allows you to punish them for switching out. And then you can knock out their opposing Pokemon that they send in in return. I still run um, Hyper Voice. Actually, check that. Let me make sure. I know I run Psychic, and I know that I run Terra Blast. So if you decide to not go with Protect, that's where you would throw in your Hyper Voice or any other coverage move that you think appropriate. All right, so something like this, either with Protect or Hyper Voice, but definitely Nasty Plot, definitely Psychic, and definitely Terra Blast. Terra Blast will hit as a normal type move uh, until you power it up. And powering it up, of course, we're going to go with the Fighting type because what takes um, Dark type attacks really well and Bug type attacks, well, that's the Fighting type. Also, the Fighting type allows us to hit things like the Dark type, which Psychic classically struggles against. Fighting also hits Steel, which Psychic and Normal struggle against. Now, what are what kind of a spread are we going to run here? Um, I would personally recommend something like 196 in Special Attack. You're going to be boosting it, and so having a less investment is probably okay. And let's run a, um, a Timid Nature and Full Speed and a little bit on the defensive side. And this is going to allow us to really outspeed um, quite a few things that aren't running any speed investment. And at the same time, we're still going to be hitting like a truck. Now, with using this set, you have to be aware that you're going to be pretty frail if uh, something tries to switch into you. Final option for those of you guys that really like uh, different kinds of sets. And, and, and Ferrigraph, if you're unfamiliar uh, with them, is actually in the UU tier. So that's not the most competitive tier in terms of the, uh, the strongest Pokemon. So you do have slightly weaker Pokemon in this tier for the most part. So using a Sap Sipper ability, meaning you can switch into Grass types and get an attack boost if you switch into a Grass type uh, the correct way. That means um, that you can go for a much more bulky set, making yourself able to tank more moves and throw damage back in response. And so here's a good example of how you can take advantage of that to the best of your ability. For the Sap Sipper set, I would probably choose to run Psychic Fangs. 
Um, this isn't necessarily for damage, but it, it's more for utility. You're able to get rid of screens that opposing Pokemon have already set up against you. Okay, I would also definitely choose um, to run something that's going to allow you to set up as well. In this case, I would, uh, I would prefer Substitute over Nasty Plot. That way you're guaranteed an attack. Someone's not going to just take you out with priority. So Substitute, Psychic Fangs, and then again, it's about what coverage you want and perhaps what, um, what recovery you want. All right, so I'm going to go with Wish. I'm going to go with Wish, and I'm also going to go with a strong um, physical attacking move here. This is going to help us take advantage of this Sap Sipper boost that we're going to be getting. So we got Body Slam, Psychic Fangs, Substitute, and Wish. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to make our item be Leftovers, which is again going to help us survive just a few more things. And then now, look at what we're going to do with the EV spread. This is going to be really different than what we normally do. We're going to go about 40 or, or 50 in Special Defense. We're going to max out that uh, HP stat. All right, we're going to go 12 in attack and then the rest in physical defense. What this is going to allow us to do is when we start boosting that attack stat, we're going to be hitting very hard with just a slight bit of investment to pump those numbers just a little bit more. But physically, we're going to be taking almost no damage from things. And especially, we're going to have uh, quite a bit of room to breathe as well. Substitute and Wish giving us a lot more survivability. And of course, if we switch in on a grass type, we may have a really good option on our hands. In terms of terra typing, we're going to want to make sure that we are accounting for things that can hit us super effectively. In this case, uh, the extra damage does not really matter near as much as having resistances. So this would be a good opportunity to go for a steel typing a water typing, something like that that has a few weaknesses um, and also covers a lot of our weaknesses. Like if they were to hit us with a, a dark type move, for instance, having a fairy terra typing would be really helpful. And I think I actually am going to go with fairy. There are a lot of dragons running around as well, and this protects against their moves as well. So here's that team uh, that I was referring to earlier. This is an OU team using Ferrigarath. Obviously, none of these are are uh, super high tier mons in OU, but it's just a team for fun. We're going to be using the Fergraph and the Citrus Berry with very high special attack, good speed investment, and a decent defense investment as well. Hyper Voice, Terror Blast, Psychic, Nasty Plot, and the Fighting, Terra Type, Kudshu to get us more health off that Citrus Berry. And let's jump into a battle and see how Ferrigarath is going to fare. You can see already that I have um, a pretty high power level team against me here. Um, I'm probably expecting. A Cyclozar or a Garganacle lead, and so in order to prepare for that, what I uh, need to do is be able to hit both of those Pokemon super effectively, and I believe Frigoraph might be my best option. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send in Frigoraph first. This is a Frigoraph video. Let's see if we can get a knockout right away. Now he's almost definitely going to switch, so we must make that call at this point. He's going to switch into something that tanks um, the move that he thinks I'm going to hit here. So I'm going to nasty plot up, I think, because I don't know that I can guarantee break the substitute without terrorizing. So let's nasty plot. And um, a reminder to those of you that haven't played before too much, Hyper Voice is a sound based move and it will go through the substitute and hit the Pokemon behind. Okay. So if Meowskarata is not if Meowskarata is not Sash, this will KO. So that's what we're gonna do. Terastalize to resist the dark type move and use Hyper Voice. He knocks off my berry, which is unfortunate. See how well we tanked that with that physical investment and that is a one shot on the Meowskarata. Hyper Voice, of course, goes through the substitute, like I said. Man, already here in game one, you can see the power of Ferrigarath, my favorite, one of my favorite Pokemon. And that is an instant forfeit from the opponent there. This team also looking pretty powerful. So uh, what we're going to be doing here is being aware of this Chin Pao because it is very strong and it could easily run through my team. I think I'm going low kicks this time because low kicks bops pretty much everything except for Halucha and um, this, this electric flying thing here. What is it called? Oricorio, that's what it's called. So we're going to go low kicks and see what we can make happen. 
They, of course, lead with the electric flyer that I was worried about. That's okay. So I think we're going to U-turn. Um, well, I guess it could air slash, which could be problematic. But I'm pretty sure that he's going to have less speed investment than me. If he does not, if he outspeeds and he kills me in one shot, we can still make this game work in other ways. So in that case, let's go first impression. Make sure we get some damage off. It does a lot. He quiver dances. I think we just uh, KO with a sucker punch. We're going to see. Do we terastalize to make sure that it KOs? I don't think so. Hey, there's that substitute again. Not bad. We're going to U-turn here. And I think we're going to be able to take out the substitute. That's not bad at all. Now, what I want to do is go into a choice scarfer or possibly um, something that has a priority move in order to make sure that we get the knockout before they can knock us out. So, what resists si uh, electric and flying? Pikachu does, but I don't know that Pikachu can live because of how frail Pikachu is. So, hmm. I know Annihilate will live one move unless he's carrying the flying stab. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try to get the knockout here and see what can happen. If Annihilate goes down, then I do take him out with um, the bug type here. Now he must switch or take the knockout. So that's what we're going to do, take the knockout. And hopefully we'll get some photograph action going here in just a moment. Low Kicks is another Pokemon I want to do a video about. Low Kicks is so good and uh, so much fun to use in singles. His damage is so high. I would not um, be surprised if he gets banned at some point. Halucha. And the other Mon that I said walled the low kicks. They're very uh, well aware of that, apparently. We're going into Pelipper. Choice Specs Pelipper. Should be able to take anything that the Halucha wants to throw out. Very well. And uh, throwing off a Specs Hurricane is going to hit pretty much anything on his team. He does have a Floatzel, which is going to be double dam or uh, double. What is it, double speed in the rain? And so I need to be aware of that. But we're going to go ahead and hurricane into whatever he wants to do. And he's got a focus sash, most likely. Oh, he does not. What was he doing swords dancing on a Pelipper? Has he never seen the move hurricane before? That's pretty wild. <laughs> and now we have the Meowskarata. Probably looking to sucker punch, perhaps. Or maybe it has the focus sash. I'm not sure. But we're going to go for a hurricane again. It had the Thunder Punch. That is okay. We'll take the we'll take the KO. So I go down to a Thunder Punch, and now I believe I'm free to bring out the Frigoraf. It is going to have Dark type moves, but I can just Terastalize and Nasty Plot. I do believe. We'll see how it works. Flower Trick is still going to hurt a little bit, but I am physically defensive. So let's see. Frigoraf will Terastalize into Fighting type, and then use Nasty Plot. And will we have another sweep on our hands here? We're going to see. Now, I believe he's going to go, okay, he goes Salamence. And I think this is just a knockout for me, unless I, uh, unless he terastalizes into something that, that is going to be able to tank a move for me, from me. Let's do Hyper Voice. It's a little stronger. It's not stronger. Excuse me. Just worried about his terastal type. Let's go Hyper Voice. If he's ghost type, I clicked the wrong move. If he's steel type, I clicked the wrong move. If he's dark, I clicked the right move. And if he doesn't terastalize, I think I clicked the right move as well. Does half. I get the citrus berry back, and that's going to be a one shot. I'm telling you guys, this thing's strong. Here comes Chin Pao, possibly. Maybe not. He knows that I one shot his Chin Pao. Floatzel. Um, it's definitely going to outspeed me here. I do not know if it hits super effectively. It might have a Zen headbutt or something like that up its sleeve. Play rough. I don't think it gets play rough. Uh, I think I'm just going to click Psychic because I get another Citrus Berry at the end of this turn. Ooh, I survive. Look at that physical defense. I'm telling you guys, this photograph is not to be messed with. It's really strong. I don't think I can survive another attack, but just in case he Ice Shards, I am going to stay in and click um, ter Terra Blast. Oh, he goes Miascarada. Wonderful. Okay, uh, I still think that I just stay in. I stay in and click Hyper Voice. 
and he hits the play rough, and there I go down. Um, and now, I think I'm free to Glamora here. And I don't, let's see, what am I? I'm, I'm Black Sludge, Toxic Debris. I think I just Power Gym. Yes, good move. One shot's the Chin Pao, and it should two-shot the Meowskarata. I don't think Meowskarata can do anything in return. If it does, I have low kicks with priority in the back. Good game. That is a good, like pretty decently strong OU team that I just took out basically with Farigraph. I hope you guys are seeing the power of this Mon. And uh, without further ado, I think that's the end of the video. I so appreciate you guys tuning in. What a great couple of battles that you guys got to see there with my Glamora tanking that play rough and now being able to fire back a power gym that's going to half the Meowskarata's health and now for the KO. Tomorrow we'll be going live with that VGC video featuring Fergraph, and I hope that you guys are looking forward to that. We'll be to in touch uh, tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for joining me on Ziggy One Plays. Obviously, a like and a subscribe go a long way. Have a great start to your post-Christmas week.